ao Senhor por essa oportunidade. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to have fellowship with you, college students, or those who are about to get into the university. But before I start, I want to know why you are here in this afternoon. Did you come to fulfill in a schedule? Why are you here in this afternoon? I was right there uh, just looking at you guys and I have to say that I, I was sad you are the college students of the church life and I didn't see fire in your hearts I didn't see love burning What are you doing here to listen to a lecture? We are not interested in give you, giving you a lecture, but we want to have fellowship with God. If you came to listen to a lecture, you're in the wrong place. But if you're here to listen to God, you're in the right place. But why are you here? How are you listening to God in your flesh? I'm sorry to start like this, but I must start like this. Facing everything that I perceived. If I didn't speak like that, I was not going to be faithful to God and to you. It is like that, that you want to be prepared to face the battle against the enemy in your, in your university. We saw something year after year. Luke 22. Open your Bible. Luke 22, 31, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked you that he may stiff you as a wheat. Year after year, we saw a group of brothers entering the university and Satan came to And some didn't stay. It's with this burden that we are here sharing, the pain that we feel to lose brothers every year. Do you think we are insensitive? It hurts in our hearts to see a generation to be sift and some to be discarded. So we are here having this fellowship because we know that this will happen. And we don't want for you to be eliminated. Did you came to to listen to a lecture or to listen to God? There is fire in your heart. Verse 33, but I said to him, Lord, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. 
Then he said, I tell you, Peter, that the rooster shall not crow this day before you deny three times that you know me. Do you think you're strong? You don't know when Satan used his instruments and he started to sift. And you don't know how that will change your being. Our desire is for you to be strong. When Satan come and sift, that you can per, uh, persevere. But that just depends on you. I cannot exercise my spirit for you. I cannot love God for you. This is the duty of each one of you. What are you doing here in this afternoon? We follow you since you were little. How many of you participate in a conference as a teenager? Year after year, we saw you guys grow. And you're about to get into the university, or you're already in. Did you know that the Lord count your ears? In Numbers 4, verse 46 and 47. Twenty-four to twenty-six. And this is what pertains to Levi. What twenty-five years old and above, one of many entered to perform services in the work of the tabernacle of meeting, and at the age of fifty years they must cleanse performing this work and shall work no more. They may minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of meeting to attend to this of the themselves shall not work. Thus you shall do the Levites regarding to their duties. So we can see that after the years passed by, they entered in the Levite in the temple of the tabernacle that year after year the Lord is looking at you and they are waiting for that day that you're going to enter in the service of God. This is the reason of our ears. If your days just pass by and there's not service to God, those ears are days and years in vain. In the day that you go away from this earth, you're going to repent. I throw away my life, but those who enter to the service of God, they will say it was worth it to live this life. This is the great difference. Can you see the, the joy of the people of this world? It is just a joy that passed by that a lie. 
Salmo 90. Psalms 90. Versículo 12. Verse 12. Ensina-nos. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Are you counting your days? He says, teach us to count our days. What that means? That means that every day it is has been counting in the presence of God. I'm counting every day. I'm not living my day in any way. Oh, I have so many days in front of me, so I'm just throwing my days away. Teach us to count our days that we can reach a pure heart wise heart. Exodus 30. Verse 14 and 15. Everyone included among those who are numbered from 20 years old and above will give an offering to the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than a half a skill. When you give an offering to the Lord to make an atonement for yourselves, that is referring to the payment of a half of a, a shekel that would, would be a price that they were paid for, for the offering to the Lord and they all have the same value, a half of a, a shekel. The rich will not give more and the poor will not give less. What that means? First of all, we all have the same value in front of God. That is the base. This is the beginning. All of us, we have the same value in front of God. That means that Christ paid the same price for each one of us. It is the same price that was paid. But... Let's read Leviticus 27. Jesus. Verse Leviticus 27, 1 to 7. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, and say to them, When a man consecrates but a vow certain person to the Lord according to your valuation, if your valuation is the mayor from 20 years old up to uh, 60 years old, then your valuation shall be 50 shekels of silver according to the shekel sanctuary. If it is a female, then your valuation shall be 30 shackles and if from five years old and up to 20 years old then your valuation for a male shall be 20 shackles and for a female shack uh, 10 shackles and if you're from a, a month old up in five years old then your valuation of male shall be five shackles of silver and for a female female your valuation shall be three shackles of silver we can see right here that when we have vow according to that person, there is a distinction, distinction of values. That means that the Lord paid a price for each one of us 
every one of us, we have the same prize in front of him in the plan of salvation, but after the plan of salvation, according to our growth in life and according to our maturity, there is a difference of value. That means that those who are more useful to God and those who are less useful to God, there is a difference of value. What is the value that you have today? You will determine. Remember, the price that was paid for us It was in great value, right? So that is redemption. But after that everything was paid, this, pay, this price of redemption, what is our value in front of God? Humanamente falando, Humanly speaking, there is a baby and there is a, a college student. What is more useful to the, the society? Who? The college student. The baby. One day he will have his value, but he is still a baby. What is the value that the world gives to the, to a college student is is, is good concept. You need to answer. You need to react it in the spirit because if not, I cannot speak right here. In this world, to be a college student has a, or doesn't a value. Yes, in the world there is a value. But now, to be a college student, there, there is not a value to God. It depends of your condition. A college student that loves the world and is connected to the world, it has value, it is useful. I'd like to pass to you a principle, a biblical principle of great importance that I would like for you to keep this principle for the rest of your lives. I'll read a verse to you and I would like for you to read as well as Proverbs 16 verse 2. Proverbs 16, verse 2. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. How God measured things. This verse sees things wait the spirit he's not measuring by your success he doesn't measure how man measures you can say what a great thing that I did the Lord comes and how the Lord will measure how waiting the spirit you're here in this afternoon what the Lord will measure he awaits your spirit that's the way that the Lord measures things it is not how a man measures things então você percebe 
Por que que Now you perceive tem esses diferentes valores how there is those um, different values in, those, in that portion of Leviticus because the Lord wakes the spirit. Remember, the Lord wakes the spirit. Why today we say, beloved brother, use your spirit, exercise your spirit. Because the Lord waits the Spirit. It is not by the success or the results. Because you can do something and the result can be zero. But zero by man's eyes. But it is not zero in God's eyes. Because the Lord waits the Spirit. What you did will have fruits for, uh, from here to 10 years, and God already knows. Are you understanding? The things are not seen how God, God sees things. God has his own ways. I would like that you pay attention what the Lord Jesus was in his childhood so let's open in luke chapter 2 Luke 2, we could see so many things in the lord jesus in his birth Now pay attention in the verse 21. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus by giving the angel and conceiving in the womb. And I was telling the experience of Simeon and Anna. And right here, in this experience of uh, Simon, on the verse, chapter 2, verse 28, and says like this, He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. I'd like for you to see a figure we have right here, Simon taking in his arms a child. Right here there is a generation looking up to a new generation, I'm looking I'm talking about a spiritual principle that is behind us. The old generation just can uh, leave when they see the new generation uh, taking place. And you guys are this new generation. I would like for you to read verse 40. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. It was like this that he finished his uh, account when he was a child. And until he is 12 years old, 0 to 12, the Lord Jesus, 0 from 12, is characterized, is described in this verse 40. He grew up, he became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Are you understanding? Right here is showing a formation. 
It is a formation from zero to 12 years old from the Lord Jesus. And, and we can see starting for the 41 and he was 12 and he was going to the feast in Jerusalem. I'm not going to get into the details of what happened, but I would like to go to the uh, verse um, 51 and 52. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he was subjected to them. But his mother kept all those sins in her heart. Now 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. It is like that that he grew from 12 to 30. Why? Because in the chapter 3, verse 23 says, Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years old of age. Verse 40 describes uh, from 0 from 12, and the verse 52 describes from 12 to 30. Zero from twelve, he grew up, became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Twelve to thirty, and increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Pay attention to this affirmation in front of God and in front of men. It's not in front of God. It's not in front of men. It is in front of God and men. Beloved young ones, pay attention to this. It's not worth it to grow just in front of men and not grow in front of God. It is not worth it just to grow in front of men and not grow in front of men. That means to not have a testimony. Now let's go to the details of uh, this period of uh, growth. Matthew 13, uh, 55. Matthew 13, 13.55 Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Matthew tells this episode just telling he is not the, this, the car, carpenter's son saying that his, father's, his father was ca carpenter. And the Lord Jesus was the carpenter's son. But let's see in Mark. Mark 6, 3. Or 8. Is this not the carpenter? The son of Mary and brothers of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. Now he shows as the carpenter. He shows that the, the Lord Jesus, he had his spiritual growth, but he had the human growth. He was the son of the carpenter, but he learned a profession. And he was also a carpenter. Amen. Today, you are in a university to learn a career for your professional areas. The Lord Jesus was the carpenter. Some scholars of the Bible, when they mention this person, they say, they say that this uh, the carpenter also can be said in a very special angle. 
that he was not one carpenter, but he was the carpenter. You cannot be an engineer, but you need to be the engineer, not the dentist, but the dentist. But what will defer you is that you just not have the human part, but you have the spiritual part. The spiritual, the human part, you can learn. You read and you practice, and the spiritual part comes from God. Right. We are worrying with you in two aspects, spiritual and human. We would like for you to have a future in the human part, but we would like that you to have a future in the spiritual life. How we mention, the enemy will come to sift. We saw already so many precious youth that they love the Lord, and after they disappeared completely, and that makes us sad. And there are some points that we would like to pass through to you, that you can uh, be firm and strong in the Lord. That your formation just cannot be in your human part, studying what you need to study, but what is more important to, to keep your person in the Lord and to be useful to the Lord. First Timothy, verse 4, verse 6 to 16. But I would like for you to read after in your house with time. Because I believe that the Lord will speak to you. 1 Timothy 4, 4, 6. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. You need to be fed with the words of faith. And let me tell you something, that the university time is the best time for you to be fed. In my life, in my time of university, it was one of the most impact, impacted times of my life of, because of the intensity that I have fellowship with God. There that I learned so many things in front of God fed with the words of faith and of the good doctrine but reject profane and old wise fables and exercise yourself toward godliness personally it is an exercise, per, it's a personal exercise in godliness. And that is connected to the exercise of the spirit. Love of brothers, you must need to learn how to exercise our spirit. In every situation, your spirit needs to be ready. 
because if you have your spirit ready, your pers per perspective of all things are going to be different. It's not a worldly perspective, but it is a godly perspective. So the exercise of the spirit is a fundamental because for the bodily exercise profits a little, but the godliness is profitable for all things having promise of the life that now is and of what which is to come. Exercise your spirit and you will have the promise of life. The promises will be real. This is something that truly we, we care. This generation needs to be a generation strong in the spirit that has weights in the spirit. This is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, for to this end we both labor and surf, suffer repro reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is Savior of all men, especially of those who believe these things, command and teach. No one despise your youth. What do you mean no one despise your youth? That uh, to be a young one is not an excuse. Are you understanding? What it means to not despise your youth, it is that for you to be a young one is not an excuse. And more, Paul says, be an example of the believers. You know that you can be an example, a pattern, a model. The Lord wants for you to be a model. In a way that the younger one, they can say, I want to be like him, and the old ones, they can see us. They can say, I want to be like him. Is that what God wants for you? Say that for the brother that is next to you. Be an example in the, to the believers in the word and conduct. In love, na fé, in spirit, na in faith, in purity. Why I was saddened in the beginning of the meeting because I didn't see to enter here a generation that was burning. Rafael came and gave uh, an announcement, come here to the front. Why so many didn't answer? Why so many didn't obey? There's much to obey. I asked Rafael to do that. Why? I want to see the brothers next to me. I don't want to see the brothers just uh, spread around. Do you think it is easy to speak, to transmit to a lot of people that are just spread around? You cannot help just a little bit. It is much for you to stand up from the back seat and come to the front seat. If it doesn't die, you cannot obey. Are you going to obey in other things? Are you understanding why that saddened me? In conduct. 
pattern in conduct. A teenager, see you that you're not standing up, he will stand up? No, you made a teenager to fall. Don't think that those things are small. If you are going to be useful in the hands of the Lord, you need to pay attention in those small things. You're here to be perfected. That's why we need to speak directly to you. Conduct in love and spirit and faith and period. Till I come, give attention to reading, to to apply yourself to reading. That's why that in the day that Satan will come to sift you and you can stand up. And you don't know when that day will come. When that day come and you want to be prepared, there's no time. Who wants here wants to be eliminated? But if Satan will come to sift you, that's that's right. Do you need to be prepared? Yes. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which has given by you by prophecy when laying on the hands of the eldership. Don't be neglect with what the Lord gave you. You cannot imagine how you can be useful in God's hand. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them and that your progress may be evident to all. We need to meditate and be diligent on those things and your progress may be evident to all. And all will say, this brother is growing, and this is for the glory of God. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue and then, for in doing this, you save both of yourself and those who are hearing you. Second Timothy 1, 6 6 to 14. Because of the time, I'm just going to mention some. Remind you, stir up the gift of God which is in you. All of us, we need to stir up the gift of God which is in you because the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and sound mind. So we don't have a spirit of, of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, not of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Participate of the sufferings in favor of the gospel. More to the end, to the verse of 14. To keep the pattern of the holy word and to keep the good deposit, don't let anyone to take your crown. You will be robbed in the in the university, but don't let anyone to take up your crown. Who participated in the teenagers' conference? Raise your hand. 
Are you going to sell your your、uh, firstborn、uh, for a plate of lentils? Do you understand what it means to lose your、uh, firstborn right? If Esau has the firstborn of right, the God it will be the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Esau. But God is the God of Abraham, Esau, and Jacob. Esau lost something. Yeah, he lost a lot. Do you want lost a lot? Second Timothy chapter two, verse fourteen and fifteen. Remind them of these things, caring before the Lord not to strive about words, do not have the ring of their hearts. Enter in the university and give testimony. I am Christian. Raise your your flag. So that you establish your your land. Now you have、uh, limits, and you will be kept because of that. In every place I go, I do that, and I go in the middle of of the businessmen. I am Christian and I love God. That's it. No one comes to me to say、um, bad things. No one come and invite me to go to inadequate places, and I'm saved from a lot of things because I give testimony. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who. Who does not need to be ashamed or rightly divining the word of truth? You need to have knowledge. You need to know. Contact with the word. You you become skillful with the word. Any time you can take a word for your needs. Second Timothy two, fourteen to seventeen. But you must continue the things which you learned and be assured of knowing who have learned them, and that you, from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through the faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable to doctrine and for reproof, for correction and instruction, but in righteousness. Four, chapter four and verse five. But you be watchful in all things, endure an affliction, do the work, and an evangelist fulfill your ministry, and that inside of your university. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to the next portion, showing the importance of a spiritual part inside of our、um, profession, inside of our workplace. So let's read in Daniel one, verse four. Daniel one. Daniel and his friends they were kept in captivity. So let's read in Daniel chapter one. You with no defect instructed and learned in science, and they were. Able to be in the king's palace and to teach. 
So those youth, they have a baggage, but they have been taken now. So they can learn the culture and the language of the Cadiz. That's what it is. Chapter 1. Verse 4. Five. Five. It means that he, they were going to be working with those youth for three years to make them how they were to go back to the Cadiz. It is the time that you go to university, right? Four to five years of formation. But we know oh, the position of them. They could change Daniel and their friends? No. Are you going to the university? They are going to be able to change you? No. So, but let's see wh what it, what is happening in the few years. They could change the hat of some brothers and sisters. You're going to be ch uh, capable to, of changing you? So in that point that I want to go, when Satan comes to sift you, you're going to be sending up. You. Is, you are better than the brothers who are um, uh, discarded. Are you better than them? I want for you to feel. I don't want for you to be like Peter. Oh, for me to deny you, I'm not going to deny you. But when the, the, the attack comes, if you don't want to fall, to be strong today. Take these words. They're going to, they're being speaking today. Are you understanding the burden, the, the heavy burden that is inside of our hearts? We don't want any one of you to be discarded. And verse 16. It says like that, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had the understanding of all visions and dreams. Now at the end of these days, and the king had said this should be brought in, and the chief to an eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them among Daniel. None was found like Daniel, Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served the king in, in all matters of wisdom and understanding, which the king examined them. He found them ten times better than all magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. There were... They were interviewed in the, king, in the king's presence, and they passed. There was no one found wiser than them. They passed through all that process, and they gained knowledge, but they didn't change. Chapter 2, verse 19. 
Então foi revelado o mistério a Daniel numa visão de noite. Daniel bendiz o Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. So Daniel blessed God in heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for the wisdom and mighty are his. And he charged the time and seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. And he gives wisdom and wise and knowledge of those who are understanding. He reveals the deep and the secret things. And he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me your wisdom and mighty. He was formed praising God. Amen. It is so wonderful. Chapter 4, verse 8. But at last Daniel came before me, his name and Baltas are according to the name of my God, and in his hand is the Spirit of the Holy God. And I told the dream before him, saying, Baltas are. And they said, Daniel, have the Spirit of God, his testimony. It was his testimony. Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, 10. Let's see how Daniel was firm for so long. 6, 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he kneeled down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his cousin since early days. And he, he was praying three times a day. And now you can understand how he was he was strong. How many times do you pray a day? It is not a, a matter of your just mouth, but if you want to be strong, you need to have roots. So now this is a point. Now Daniel chapter nine, verse two. In the first year of the reign of I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Then he read, he read books, he read scriptures. He was someone that prayed and read the word of God. This is your formation. That's why he can can be standing up. Do you know the importance of a young generation in front of God? The young generation is useful for what? It is not as a testimony of of defeat, but as a testimony of victory. Is is because you're looking to the word and you're saying the word is so strong, so the focus is wrong, because our God is stronger. You need to look at the word and see my God is stronger. The spirit that is emitted is stronger. That's the way to see things. Brother, oh, the word was so strong. It doesn't, you have a spirit that is stronger. Genesis 41. Uh, verse 38 and 39. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can I find such one as this? A man of whom is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, And as much as God has shown you all this, there 
is no one as discerning and wise as you. This is the testimony of Pharaoh about Joseph. Do you want the coverings can give this testimony about you? That your boss give this testimony about you in this way? Oh, there is this guy here in the company that which is the Spirit of God. And God reveals everything to him. There is no one more wise than him. So let's read in Act 7. Act 7. When he's talking about Moses, twenty-three. Now, when he was forty years old, he came into his heart and visited his brother and then the children of his Israel. When he came to Egypt, he forgot the people that he were he belonged to. No. Are you going to forget? Now the great problem of Moses Moses thought that with uh, human knowledge, with the knowledge that he, he gained from Egypt, that he could do so many things, but God showed him that it was not like that. In the verse 35, this Moses whom they rejected, saying, who made you a ruler and a judge is the one God sent you to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who would appear to him in the bush. God showed to Moses, it's not your knowledge from Egypt that, that will deliver the people. It is my hand. It is the angel that would do that. Are you understanding my formation in university? It is to have a human knowledge, but God will use is not yours. It is me using it will not produce anything, but God using it will produce so much. So that's why in our formation we need to take care of our human part and our spiritual part. Atos 23, verse 3. About Paul. He said about 22, I am indeed a Jew born in Tarsus of Sicilia, but brought up into the city and found Gamaliel thought according to the strictness of our father's law and was zealous to the word of God was you all are today. This right here was his formation. Because Gamaliel was the, the man. But let's read in Acts. Verse 6. Verse 10. Chapter 6, verse 10. When Stephen was talking to people, there in the synagogue and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke so you speak by the wisdom and spirit act 13 Acts 13, verse 
para com uma pessoa ali, Elimas, o mágico, Saulo, também chamado Paulo, cheio do Espírito Filled Santo. with the Holy Spirit, look immediately at him and said, oh, full of all deceived and all fraud, you son of the devil. Beloved youth, I hope you can understand God's heart. The Lord wants to save you. You know that you're going to enter in an area that is very dangerous and the Satan will fight you. And we know that. But we don't want anyone to be lost. That's why we are having this fellowship, but it only depends on you. If you use or if you don't use your spirit, if you're active or if not in your spirit, may the Lord bless you. We will always pray for you. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lord. What about we stand up? I know that some are seated. So let's call upon the name of the Lord a little bit. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Invoca como você respira. Call upon the name of the Lord as you breathe. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. So let's uh, be strong a little bit more. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. A little bit more. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amém. So let's see. Amen. Miguel fez a pergunta, vou, eu vou fazer la novamente. So, uh, so, brother Miguel, quem está aqui? Asked that, but I will do it again. How many of you are here since the uh, teenagers' conference? Since you were a child, who was born in the church life? Thank you. Alguém aqui se lembra de um hino? How many of you remember? A hymn at the time of the the tape. Now many of you is the time of the tapes. The sound tape. Jesus. Do you remember? In the beginning of my childhood. And one hymn that has in that tape, it gains my heart when I was so little. And the hymn is this one. Who remember can uh, follow me. Eu quero ser alguém que ame a Deus, então escolho ser um homem de Deus. Não há nada mais nesse mundo que eu desejo ser, não há nada mais nesse mundo que vale a pena ser. Bonito, né? Beautiful, right? Esse hino ganhou meu coração. And I am. 
gain my heart when I was so little. And Jenner raised a feeling that was so strong in my heart that one day I would be a man of God. And I grew. And uh, when I grow up, I want to be a man of God. Who wants to be a man of God? Say amen. And I'm referring to the sisters. Who wants to be a woman of God? And I remember that I used to come to the teenagers' conference. That before was the conference of the first period. And the saddest day, it was yesterday, the... The, tar the Tuesday, and yesterday I saw some some youth to get into the vans and buses and uh, saying bye to the, their friends that they made here and they going back to their friends. And I remember a little bit of my time. And I remember when I used to come and when I start the bus and I went going back I used to cry because what I what I lived here was so good and I wanted to continue have you ever had that feeling and I used to come back to my house encouraged full of life full of encouragement and I was feeling full, full of life. It's full of life after the first period. Who is feeling more transformed? It was exactly like that that I was feeling. But with the passing of the days and the, the weeks and months, and I used to feel that that encouragement to decrease that burden, to decrease of intensity. And later, I was wanting the next conference. It was that your experience? And with time, that things uh, start to to be cold and I couldn't uh, retain what I gained in the conference but I couldn't understand until one day I understood that through the weeks with the time that, that I received started to go away you know what is, was the problem it was uh, it was holes in my character it doesn't matter when, how much I received, because those holes will impede, it was avoiding that I could be full. It doesn't matter, brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how full you are living this conference. If your character is not perfected, if your character the holes in your character is not fixed. Everything that you're gaining is going to go away. Are you understanding this? And after I understood that, the Lord took me to a decision. And I passed my teenage times and uh, youth in that getting filled and empty again and filled and empty again but until one day i took a very important decision in my life a decision that changed my life it was a decision of doing gtc say amen praise the lord so i consecrate myself to gtc so that i had an opportunity to fix the so many holes that I had in my character. So GTC is for that, to perfect our character. And I was filled with the word of God and I had so many experiences. And the base of my, my spiritual living 
is because at that time that I had with the Lord. But that in GTC was when effectively when the Lord started to uh, shape my character to a man of God. Why am I saying that about character? What is the character? Character, it is our person. It is what we are. It is what we do. 30% of what we, we have from our character is what we receive from our parents. But the other 70, it is what it is shaped by the environment that is around us. So the living with the GTC and the brothers, it was very important for me to to acquire many spiritual principles and many things that fixed the holes in my character. And then I could start to be used by God. Our person is more important than our service. Now in Genesis chapter 4, it is there explicit. Genesis 4 verse 3 to 5 tells the story of Cain and Abel. And the text says that the Lord didn't please of Cain and Abel. And his offering, what came first? The offering of the person. The person. Indicating that for God, the most important thing is our person, is our character. Amen, brothers? Praise the Lord. Who right here wants to be useful by God? Who was encouraged by Brother Miguel? God has a work and his work is great and he surely he has so many great expectations in us we that we are uh, universe uh, college students the lord has so many expectations in in each one of us praise the lord each one of you, you have a, a heart to be useful by God, and the Lord can keep that, that feeling. But to have that intention of being useful by God, it is not enough that we can be useful by God. It is important for us to develop skill, skills that we can have a capability to receive responsibilities. I would like for you to open in Matthew 25, verse 15. A um deu cinco talentos, a outro dois. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and another one, to each he one according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. So see what was the the um, items that he he had to distribute uh, his gifts to give to people. What was that? It was capability. When I found out that many years ago, I was serving the Lord already. I had already passed through GTC. And the capability of serving, and that called my attention. And I saw that how many gifts the Lord could give me it was a core it was related to the capability that I have so what did I have to receive more gifts I need to increase my capacity my capability capacity it is the potential of having something so according to Matthew 
So that person had the potential, the ability of receiving five and another two, and the third had the capability of receiving just one. I don't know what is your potential, but I know that you can increase it. Who wants to be useful in God's hand? Who wants to be greatly used by the Lord? Do you want the Lord to use you a lot or just a little bit? So if you want to be used greatly in God's hand, you need to increase your potential. And that's what I did uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago. I used to serve the Lord already, and I decided to get into college, and I got into the university, and my first formation, it was in a uh, human record, um, and there I had a uh, knowledge and acquire uh, instruments that increase my capability, my potential, and I could apply everything that I learned in my service to God. Who doesn't know? For so many years I served in Brasil, and I am one of the brothers that coordinated the, the GTC in Brasil. And that, uh, in, in their career was very important for my service to the Lord. But, um, but that took me just to one point. And in one moment, I perceived that I had to advance more. And I want to show you, brothers. It is important, yes for us to acquire specific uh, specific knowledge. This conference just happens because of the consecration that so many brothers that not just only are here to serve, but they, they have a specific knowledge of sound media, administration, uh, food. Isn't that true? So have specific knowledge about something, it is important. And I want to, to use your Bible to see that. Exodus 35. Twenty-five. Exodus twenty-five. God revealed it to Moses how to do the the tabernacle, and in chapter twenty-five until the chapter thirty-five, it was it is ten chapters, and in those chapters we can see the specifications of uh, the tabernacle, how he could be built. It was measure for everything. Imagine this a meeting hall right here. It was not built without a preparation. Uh, sketches were made, uh, plans were made. Everything, it was uh, thought in the details. And professionals had to be hired to execute every part of the, the building. And the tabernacle that had, that had specifications, if you read the, the chapter 25 to 35, you will see how many details they had in the in the the building of that tabernacle the lord needed uh, people not just with the heart but people that had specific knowledge in chapter 35 starting from chapter 30 
da construção do tabernáculo. Talvez alguns de vocês nunca ouviram falar dessa coisa. And they have the two principal characters from the building of of pela execução prática das coisas. Vamos ler, vamos saber quem foram eles. A partir do versículo 30. Disse Moisés aos filhos de Israel: Eis que o Senhor chamou pelo nome a Bezalel. E Moisés said to the children of Israel: See, the Lord has called by the name Bezalel, son of Uri, and the son of Ur, the tribe of Judah. And he was filled with him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge in all matter of workmanship and to design artistic works to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting Jews and setting in cavity wood and to work in all matter of artistic workmanship. And here is the second uh, character, Aoleabi. And he was filled with a uh, skill to all matter of work to engrave and design the tapestry maker in blue, purple, scarlet, three, the, and the final line, verse 136, the chapter 36. And Bezalel in Oliab had given the artisan and whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to work how to do all matter of work for the service of the sanctuary. They were anyone, they just had the heart, no. They had specific knowledge. That's why they were useful to the boy. What you're studying today, believe. God can use in the edification of the church. Later on, in the edification of the temple, the substitute, the tabernacle, the Lord also counted with skillful person. Who edified the temple? Who knows? Who was res responsible for edification of the temple? Salomon. But um, Salomon had um, difficulties and he seek for help. Chapter 2, we could see an alliance and that he had with with a king in verse 7 said send me now a man that know how to work in gold silver Agora, pois, envio um homem sábio de grande a saber irão a mim. And now I have sent a skillful man endowed with understanding who ran at my master craftsmanship. Are you understanding right here? Why he was chosen? Why? Because he had specific knowledge. In, in any time, in the, the work of the Lord, the Lord will ask for the specific knowledge that you have, believing that. Praise be the Lord. We know, we saw Moses 
It was a man greatly used by the Lord in the Old Testament. Maybe the most important character in the Old Testament. And, and he counts 40 um, Act 7, 22 says that there Moses learned all science of Egypt and he became powerful in works and, and words. It was very important in the way that he passed through Egypt. In that time, uh, Egypt was a, a, a great country, and in that time, uh, all science, human science, was in Egypt, and, um, Moses, and Moses entered there to learn. All that knowledge had to pass through a process of death and resurrection. It was 40 years in the desert, but first God had to pass him through Egypt. So today, brothers, if you would like to... And today you need to pass through the university. It was so good if universities were in a place like this and the teachers would be like uh, Brother Miguel and like Brother Pedro, Brother Azra. And can you imagine those brothers teaching us every day? But it's not like that. Think about your professor. It is like Brother Miguel? No. So if we would like to learn a specific knowledge, we need to go to college. We need to go to college. It is important. It is important to be capable. It was it, they are a center of human capacitation. And two years and a half ago, understanding that I had to expand a little bit more my capacity he, that he can count a little bit more with me. I took another important decision in my life. And I entered in a second um, in a second graduation. And I, today I'm in psychology. And that is my second graduation. And I can tell you, and a person that entered in a, fa in a college 10 years ago and entered in a college right now. And I can tell you how, ch how things changed. All that worriness, the worriness uh, uh, the brother had, it was very important that the Lord can wake us up. Unfortunately, the university is in a bad environment, a hostile environment. God is not welcome in, in colleges. Who are studying a university know exactly what I'm talking about. Universities, they are a hostile environment for the Bible. The Bible in a university is seen as something, something that is not useful in our days. And a maxima is understood as one way of viewing things. And universities, they are a hostile uh, environment. Have you ever felt that hostility? I feel it. I see it. So, being a Christian, 
numa universidade, and, aprender conhecimentos específicos. And to be in a university to learn a specific knowledge to to grow our capacity capacity so that the Lord can be useful. It means to uh, take risk. So in that period, there is so important that we are passing through. And I say us because I'm passing through that as well. We need to put our anchor in the spirit. That's why our desperation earlier it is the fire of the Spirit. Oh, Lord Jesus. We need to put our anchor in the church. We need to set our anchor in the service of the church. A Christian, a young Christian universe that is a college student that doesn't have an anchor set in the spirit in the church and there he's like a boat in the middle of the ocean. He is guided by the, the waves. He is guided by ideologies. He is guided by patterns of the world. He is guided by science. São essas coisas que vão nos moldar, irmãos? Are those things that are going to guide us, brothers? Nós precisamos lançar nossa anca, âncora no Espírito. We need to set our anchor in the Spirit. He here feels that he needs to reconsider the university life. The college life. Every day before I'm going to college, I need to ask myself if my anchor was set to the Spirit and forget to set my anchor in the Spirit. If not, you're going to be dragged by ideologies, by the rulers of the world that made the Lord uh, kept us in college. We need to be a generation that use the spirit. We need to use our spirit. Do you know what it is to have a spirit? A human spirit, it is a greatness. Zechariah chapter 1. Place the human spirit in the same scale of greatness of heavens and earth. Look at the heavens, look at the sky, the beauty, the star, the, the moon, the, the sun. It is beautiful, right? Right? Look at the earth, diversity of life. All those things enchant us. Two years ago, I was in uh, I was in Bahia, and I had the opportunity uh, to see a uh, jumping of a whale in the beach, and that caught my attention. I was wow, what is that? How beautiful is that? And I was so impressed by what my eyes saw. But you know what could impress me every day is to have a spirit inside of us. That is a greatness. Brothers, we need to exercise our spirit. For what? To mature our spirit. So that we can discern things. So uh, the danger it is in the university. Don't, don't be deceived. There is a danger. There is extracurricular uh, courses. And if we are not in the spirit as students, we are going to be dragged. In Acts uh, chapter 17, I'm getting to the end. 
Nós temos aqui Paulo. We see right here Paul em Atenas. in Athens. Athens. Capital da Grécia. Uh, capital Lugar. of Greece. Onde There's a um place. Mundo. Super exagerado. That they have a very exaggerated uh, worship to idols. What was not missing to, to the Greeks who was uh, the idols. Imagine an environment like that. It was heavy, right? The environment in where you, you study is heavy, right? Look what happened in the chapter 17, verse um, 16. While Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within when he saw that the city was given over to idols. In the universities, that there is idolatry. Satan took place of that environment, of that place. Why? Because he knows that in that place that there is youth, there is uh, sons of God. Por isso é um ambiente pesado. That's why it is a heavy environment. Quando o irmão Miguel falou que dói, aquilo doeu em mim. When he Sabe said the hurts, ano, nós perdemos jovens. That year after year we lost youth. Irmãos, Brothers, do mal que impera. In front of the evil that, that governs. Our spirit needs to be shaken. You cannot go out and say yes to everything that you, you heard. You need to have a, exercise the spirit to discern all things. Why am I here? To acquire a specific knowledge to serve God. Amen. Amen isso? Can you say amen to that? Nós não estamos ali we are not there razão. for any other reason. Louvado seja o Senhor. Praise be the Lord. Para terminar, so to finish, queria abrir com vocês, I'd like to Salmo read with 90, you uh, Psalms 94. Psalm 20. Verse 20. Did you find it? Let's read together. Shut the throne. Shall the throne of iniquity which devises evil by law have fellowship with you? Sendo forjado evil being formed in the, in the form of laws and curses if you're not not in a college environment with your anchor in the spirit you're not gonna be perceived you're not gonna even perceive the evil coming and when you and when you pr when you see you're gonna be um, representing him in our actions, the way we speak, in things that goes against God and goes against something that uh, reign uh, conduct of a Christian, may the Lord be with us. And as it was said, in the messages of the Não conference of uh, teenagers, it doesn't matter how we end here in college. It doesn't matter how you are right now. What it matters is the way you're going to go out of there. That you can go out with your um, potential increased. That we can attribute, um, and we you can be very grateful, useful in the hands of the Lord. 
Lord Jesus. So that was the fellowship that I had to have with you. Don't forget. Don't forget that the day of your formation because we are there to expand our capacity to better serve the Lord. Amen? That was the first part of the fellowship, a help of a brother that is with you. Receive these words as a word of a university, a, a college student as well. Now I want to invite a couple that have very precious experiences that yesterday they were as a student, but today they continue in the university as teachers and professors, and today they have their experience. And receive Brother Del Fabio and Sister Jessica of the church in Quixa da Sierra. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Now say stronger. Jesus is Lord. Now we are going to give just our testimony. And the objective of this testimony is for us everything that we have speaking right here. Everything that the Lord has speaking to us is not an empty shack. Everything is true and faithful. So when we are ex uh, sharing our experiences, the objective is that this word is faithful in our life, happen in our lives, and it will happen in your lives. So listen, we're going to try to be um, brief. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Me and my husband, we knew each other in college. And the environment of college for many Christian students, it is an environment that they can lose their faith in the Lord. But in my experience, it was there that the Lord saved me. In my 18 years old, I, I'm... I'm graduating in environmental engineering. I didn't believe in the Lord, but it was there in that place. It was for me my salvation. And in that environment in college that was very heavy and Satan didn't want for that to happen. And was he, he wants to happen in our lives, to ha to change to our, the culture of a Babylonic uh, culture and many youth, they enter and with the church vision, but they they leave with the culture of the Chaldees. Now with the culture of what the Lord. But I praise the Lord that was there in that place that He prepared for me the salvation. The salvation for the church. The church it was in that place that He made me daughter of God through a, a young one, a young one from the church life. He preached the gospel to me, and he took me to the meetings, and he took me to the conferences. It was my husband. And after two years and a half, we got married. But in that period of time, the first point, it was that after the gospel entered my life, 
in that environment, he changed my identity. And that was, was um, show that now that is my identity now. Daughter of God, oh Lord Jesus, that is my identity and that kept me and that have been kept in me the reading of the Bible and the library many times. I have I was a very good student, but reading the Bible, it was something good for me. I never have had read the Bible before. Who knows the, the, the Bible reading, the annual Bible reading. It was August of 2010, and I made that commitment with the lawyer I wanted to read the Bible in one year. It was in that time of my life in my college that I, I start the reading of the Bible, we praise the Lord, it worked out. And my, and my, my colleagues, they used to see that, and that was part of my life. At, just as the brother show with Daniel, he understood the word of God. And I remember many brother, many, um, Colleagues of mine, they were like before the test, they were there studying and studying. And the Lord conquered me. And, uh, and now I went to to feel that, like, that I was completing the reading. But it was that something so simple to open my Bible and read. When when everybody's like just running around before the task, you're reading your Bible. And I remember very clearly one colleague of mine, what are you doing? Everybody's there studying and you're reading. What are you reading? And I said, I'm reading the Bible. And I said, right now? And I can remember that. But the Lord doesn't he doesn't uh, take for less, and he gave me the best score on that test. And for the glory of God, many admitted that, but they knew that it was the Lord. And many admitted it was the Lord, Lord Jesus. And that is part of our identity as Christians. And that is something that I want to show you, the difference between a Christian college student and a Christian in the university. And the difference between being a college student that is Christian, but what the Lord wants from us, it is for us to be a Christian in the environment of the college. I am Christian, I am Christian. And now I'm in the environment of the college. I'm not a college student that is Christian, but I'm a Christian that is in a college environment. So he passed through that, all that period of time to be a Christian, enter a Christian and to leave being a Christian. This is a very strong characteristic Oh, Lord Jesus, and that was a very good posture that the Lord gave us. And one point that I want to give it to you, and that He gave it to me, it was to do GTC. I didn't do GTC before; I never had that opportunity. They were not. Christians, but the Lord will save them. But for a father to to stop your college and do GTC, it was something that doesn't that doesn't exist. So you're gonna leave your future to to be a missionary. 
and for obedience to that, I didn't do GTC. But just right after my husband to graduate, and he, after he graduated, I was in the fifth semester. And he said, let's do GTC. We were married. We concluded and we got married. So let's do GTC. <laughs> my, my parents was not uh, more in my command. <laughs> now my head is my husband. But we together we went out to do GTC. So that it was very important for us. And for me, that was still in college. It was essential. Because my posture before GTC, but before GTC, the Lord put in me a spirit now that is for influence the, the environment of the college and for me it was necessary to to stop a little while my college and when you are in your college when you are there they want to put in your head that that is everything it is your future if you go to another place if you go to the Lord or to the church the you're you're putting into the garbage your future but it's not your future is the Lord the Lord is the honor of your future in that moment I was like wow if I stop college it was something inside of me inside of me it was like oh I'm losing something I was thinking like that, oh, I'm missing something. And my, my colleagues was like, oh, you're going to do that. You're the really so good student, why are you doing that? And that was not easy. When you say, oh, you, you stop your college, so the GTC was not easy. No, you need to run. If not, someone will pass by you. But the Lord showed that the value of that, the value of that, you need to trust in the Lord. In the that verse, in Matthew, to seek the Lord and His justice, and He will add everything. It was that that the Lord gave me. College has that value. Let's do GTC, and the Lord did wonderful things. And college was there. Everything the same, the same. And I started again. But now the Lord was uh, straightening in me. And again, a uh, spiritual friend. So, and she entered in, in college. And we became a spiritual friends, strengthening one another. That we too, we did GTC together, and then we started a group of prayer, and we started inviting our friends. And people. And another point that I would like to to say right here, it is possible to believe inside a college and the gospel was preached to me, I believe, and they used 
to preach the gospel, there are many believed. And many others were strengthened. So it's possible to preach the gospel in college. It's possible to believe in the Lord in college. And、um, to finish、uh, my, my point right here, it was my, my graduation. I continued right there. And the Lord guide all things. And then comes the day that we dream our graduation. We are waiting for it. Some ways for four, five, six years. And then the Lord prepared our, my graduation. And we could see that He took care. He took care of that. It is like a bridge. That we're crossing a bridge. Oh, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you, during college, when he read. That you can cross that bridge as well. Oh, Lord Jesus, brothers and sisters, the one that is more in interesting in you, who is more interested in you that you can graduate is the Lord because He has a plan. It is a God that makes plans, included to places in college. So when you finish, you have a, an expectation of putting you and using you in a different way that is not through college. You will not be used. You're not going to be used. It's for you to be used. All of Jesus. Oh, now I'm going to work. What if I finish? I finish where I'm going to work, but He's faithful. Give it to the hands of the Lord. If that He's faithful. In all stages, that He will also give you, that you will not only be a, a professional that, is, that has a career, but a Christian that, that is in that place. You will be a Christian. Exercising your career. And the Lord did something wonderful, and my husband would tell something. Praise the Lord. And she crossed that bridge with a strong identity, and that's the will of the, the Lord. Let's cross that bridge. Uh, with the spirit and life, there is a transformation happening in us. What are you going to be transformed into after college? It is. And college is. And the Lord wants to make us. Some, and we have to have a very strong identity through all the years of college. And the Lord gave us a profession. We didn't have a, a graduation, a um, uh, master's or postgraduate course, but、um, but I had、uh, to do、um, a federal、um, job. And. 
a friend of mine, and I saw and uh, and uh, and I saw in a, a research that seventy percent of Christians they stop serving the Lord after college, and we. We cannot be inside on that statistics, so let's cross that bridge in a safe way. So when I received that message, I was like, Lord, if you place me there as a professor, I will, I will help your children to cross that bridge. I want to be a Christian in that profession. And we just have one task to do and uh, a lecture to give and another pr professors of us we had uh, they had other things to do and we did all those things and we were approved i was the first place and she was the fifth place and the lord allowed her allow her to be the fifth place that she could be and a master's that she can later gain more than me. So the Lord placed us there. And the Lord honored the vow that we did. And we have beloved brothers to help the, bro the, the children of God to cross, cross that bridge. And we are professors today. We are working in different cities and I would like to ask for a prayer that we can stay in the same city because we are working in different cities but the Lord has weighed in the city that she is and the way that the city that I am and I know that in the right place they are going to place us in the same city and help us to help the children of God to guide, guide others to cross that bridge and there was a moment that we said that was um, and we had different courses and in the end we called the names of the students and I sat like that on the first day of class after uh, I call your name I'll put a Bible verse right here and I'm gonna just comment about this Bible verse you can stay or you can leave and at the beginning 90% of the students stayed they stayed to listen to the Bible verse I don't know by curiosity or and we started sharing the word what word or that there are like children books or the, the 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 words of the youth conference in 1995 and basically a hundred percent of the students stayed to listen to the word of god and you know and a brother in the past shared that it's between one year the every person has three to seven year, seven days that that person has a, a existential crisis. That person can be very certain that certain that what they believe, but that one day that that person don't know where they're coming from, they're going. But if the Lord says something, the Lord. And Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 13 says, Do I take all the shield of God that you can resist in the evil day, that you can, deploy, after you have overcome everything, you can remain unshakable? What that means? That you need to overcome, overcome everything to remain unshakable it is to cross a bridge with the hands full of the Lord it's not overcoming like Rock Balboa but it's to cross and present fruits to the Lord and after 
PCC. You have overcome everything. You present your final projects, tasks, and you can have um, present fruits into your hands. The Lord can do with you. So what the Lord has doing for me and for you, the word of the Lord is faithful. And, and there is a student that I teach, he's here. Who knows that in the next conference, who will bring someone is you? I believe. Do you believe? So let's repeat to one another. And after you had overcome everything, you can remain unshakable. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Depois de ter vencido tudo. After you have overcome everything. Amen. You can Nossa remain geração, unshakable. Our generation, geração, brothers, is an unshakable generation. The enemy has tried of all matters. He can try to hurt us. He can shake us a little bit, but in that day, we will be standing in front of God. And I would like to finish the brothers the project. That we can be useful in the hands of the Lord. That we can be useful in the hands of the Lord in the time of our university. The Lord has opened a very op great opportunity, many brothers, to study in Europe. And this door is open every, every day more. Oh, my study in the Europe is very expensive. It's not, it's not that, that hard. And who here? It is... It is studying medicine. We cannot give a lot of details, but there is a very precious doors opening in the area and that I would like to that we need to consider not just but we can align those two both things. But we can use this time to serve in Europe. So many students. It is a continent that is cold, but with the fire of the Spirit. God needs us. We don't know, brothers. But if our hands in the hands of the Lord, we don't know where the Lord wants to good put this seed. We know that is the word of God, but we are the seed of the Lord in His hands. God, it is a, a very great and he know where to put Talvez the pieces in the best place in the right time maybe the Lord wants to put you uh, strategically where you are he is the Lord of the church and he's coming back according to his purpose. And uh, I want for them to give testimony.
I, uh, youth in college, he is uh, useful in God's hands? Yes or no? Yes, it can be. And this is the heart of God to pre -hainal. And the church life as a whole, some ways were um, so that for you to uh, gain those people, you need to be introduced in the middle of those people. What about we be in the middle of those people? And this um, project started. And uh, graduation, uh, master degree, and doctors, you're very involved in society and they're very important to the world. They're respected that those youth, they cannot be introduced into the Europe uh, society, but they can also receive the Word of God. By being here, For many of you coming here, can expect for us to answer those questions: how how much we pay, how much how what is our routine? But what I have to speak about, um, it doesn't mean just to study next to castles, but it's for me to know the reality of the church life. In my uh, place, it was very uh, similar what the brother Gabriel uh, shared. It was high peaks and low points. And I used to go to my, my church, my city. And there, I could see the God of glory. But when I was home and, and uh, living with, with my parents or at school, and people that I was involved, and I felt that the, the God of glory was not with me. And there in Portugal, I could see the reality of the church life. Why I'm saying the reality of the church life? What is the church? And we have two sentences uh, saying, What is this? It is the body of Christ. And church life. It's not the name of the ch our church. And the body of Christ, and when, when that life, and I make a lot of mistakes, many things happened, many failures, but I'm sure that I, that besides all those mistakes, I know what the Lord gave me. And I'm, pl I'm in a place that I'm very cared for many brothers. Day by day, the life of God taking care of us. The Lord is speaking to the brothers next to me what we should do. And it's been a very good experience. And we have a place right there between the doors four and five and we are there every day for a half an hour uh, uh, before and after the meetings. And we are available to take all the your doubts that even before you ask uh, information for you to pray about it, that you guys can serve with the with us. There is not going to be any place that you can be happy, you can be used by the Lord. With that heart, pray to the Lord and seek for us, and the Lord will do everything. My name is Deborah, 
and I do engineering. And when I moved, I was born in the church life. And I It was just something that I was doing by me. And I did GTC in Brasilia. And I started to walk on my own legs. I was not um, waiting for, for brothers. And I learn how to see the Lord more and how He is amazing, how He is simple. And for me, I was very independent and in how I was dependent on my parents. Not only Or dependent. Eu tive muita ajuda lá. I had. Eu tive muita ajuda lá. I had a uh, great help there. Mas só me But the Lord helped me, and I cannot do without Him. Because the church is very small. If I don't do, anyone do. Not because they can't. But because the Lord gave us this capability, and no one can take your place. And the, in those cities, there is a lot of brothers. And I see how we are imparting to the Lord. The simple thing, everybody cleans the, the <laughs> I know that many go out of your comfort zone because the comfort zone restrains our growth. And I know that many things I couldn't grow, but many things I, I matured. <laughs> Just pray to the Lord if you feel touched. Go to another country is very important. Maybe it's not your time, but maybe it is. Pray. Contact us. I know that one of the great experiences of study in another country uh, supported by the church is not only the opportunity that we have to increase our capacity, but in intimacy. But there, we are very useful to the Lord, not because we are capable but because the church is small and and the field is great but the workers are few don't don't be looking if you have um, money um, the Lord will show you his will We would like to show you a video.
Ei hey, você, você mesmo jovem, você já pensou em servir no exterior? Já teve o um sentimento de servir em outras nações ao Senhor? Agora imagine fazer isso fazendo uma faculdade. Hoje isso é possível aqui em Portugal. O Senhor tem aberto essa porta para que você possa pregar o Evangelho em todo e qualquer lugar aqui na Europa. Meu nome é Juan Daniel Vargas Moegues, eu sou de Valle do Par, Colômbia. Meu nome é Vitória, eu sou de São Francisco do Conde, na Bahia. E estou aqui em Portugal, fazendo parte do projeto Pré-Reino. Eu faço economia na Universidade do Porto. Eu vi o chamamento na conferência há dois anos atrás é, para o Pré-Reino. Recebi o encargo e, e o desejo de quedarme aqui na Europa sirviendo. Nós temos um conceito que muitas vezes isso não é para mim, está fora da minha realidade. Isso não é verdade. O Senhor tem aberto portas para atrair cada vez mais você e eu para estarmos aqui na Europa e servirmos ao Senhor. O processo é muito simples. Basicamente, o processo utiliza a sua nota do Enem. Mas, irmão, eu só fiz o Enem há muito tempo atrás, não fiz o último Enem. Não é problema. Por quê? Porque algumas universidades aceitam o Enem com dois anos passados ou três anos passados. Tudo depende da universidade e o curso que você escolhe. Aí você pode pensar, essa porta é somente para quem fala português. Não, também é para os irmãos da Sudamérica. Todas as pessoas que são estrangeiras, ou seja, que não são cidadãos, que não possuem nacionalidade de um país da União Europeia, tem a possibilidade de se candidatar para o que eles chamam de estudante internacional, que é essa lei que alberga cidadãos estrangeiros para estudar graduação e pós-graduação em Portugal. Os irmãos aqui têm um viver muito intenso da vida da igreja. Está muito ativa, com muitos jovens. Temos reuniões quase todos os dias. E o Senhor tem nos dado uma graça imensa aqui na Igreja no Porto. E o Senhor realmente me trajo com um propósito a Porto, que foi levar seu Evangelho. A gente não fica parado, a gente serve muito, está sempre é, no calor do Espírito. Me sinto muito feliz aqui, estudando e fazendo parte deste grande projeto para o avanço do Evangelho e para que o Senhor não se detenha em seu em sua avanço e crescimento. E isso tem sido muito gratificante para mim, isso tem sido a minha salvação diária. E desde que eu estou aqui, eu tenho gostado muito, o curso realmente é puxado. E sim, é muito difícil dar saudade, mas aí a gente desfruta de, do nosso Senhor, de uma forma nova. Com a visão de que nós estamos aqui para servir ao Senhor, é, tudo torna-se mais leve. Esse projeto ele nos proporciona isso, nos proporciona cuidar do nosso espiritual, e cuidar do nosso humano. E é isso que o Senhor espera de nós. E estamos convidando vocês, né? para fazer parte desse projeto. E queremos convidar você para participar desse projeto e juntos trazer o Senhor de volta. Então, espero que hagan todos parte de nosso projeto. Somos uma família e nós estamos esperando aqui. Vem! Você! Também! Fazer! Parte! Do nosso! Encargo! De trazer! O Senhor! De volta! É, só precisando que vocês ficam tão claro. É, Just hoje, nós todos moramos na cidade do Porto. Saying that we all live in Porto. É, estudamos a maior parte na Universidade do Porto. And we study in é, the University of Porto. Mas todos é, estamos na mesma cidade. And we have two houses. I have one for the brothers and one for the sisters. We left our houses with many fears. But I can tell you that the Lord provided to us in all things. That we are going to be there besides 288. Anything you can look for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for this afternoon. 
The Lord spoke to us. So let's end up finish with the prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your speaking. We are your people. We are this generation that it is strong, unshakable. A generation that uses this spirit that is not passive, but fights with the Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you because we have the Spirit and we have everything that we need. We have Christ and we have the power of the Spirit. We have the cross. Bless this youth conference. Bless this time. We thank you for this afternoon. Bless each college student that every you can be the strength, you can be uh, the power to overcome all situations. Lord Jesus, bless these brothers, bless the sisters. We send them to their university, fill them with the Spirit, fill them with your power. Lord Jesus, bless Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen.